Good evening, Gibbs families. I hope you enjoyed this day and to all moms out there, happy Mother's Day. I am very glad Mother's Day fell on when it did and not yesterday because nobody wants to know on Mother's Day in May. And luckily that went, <laughs> went away really quickly. I'm not sure what other layers we could add to this this um, this time of time we're going through here. It's pretty crazy. Um, I wanted to uh, come out to you with a with a vlog today to talk a little bit about uh, some of the feedback that I've been getting and also to uh, follow up a little bit on the uh, forum that we had last week the district ran. I got a chance to talk a little bit um, live about what we were doing at Gibbs and I did mention an activity tracker and a new and updated activity tracker for students. So I have that to show to you today. Um, I also wanted to let you know that most of my questions have been around curriculum and that making sure that kids are doing three hours worth of work during uh, the day. And I have to say, the feedback has been really all over the map. I, I'm getting some parent families saying this is too much. I'm getting families saying this is just right. And I'm getting families that saying this isn't enough. And so the way that I feel like we've rolled this out, your, your children should have enough work to do each day to take to, that would last them three hours, especially if they're embedding the 30 minutes of reading each day. And they're also embedding videos that they're watching for their uh, classes, whichever curriculum is coming out, whether it's um, PE and math, if for example, on Monday, or if it's ELA and music, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to finish all of that work on that day. It's just that that is the day that it's being introduced. So I, I'm going to show you a little bit of this activity, activity tracker that I have developed for the students. This first whole first chunk here um, is a, you can, you can see that I'm Kind of moving around it usually gives me a red circle. Um, I wanted to show you what it might look like if your students are loading assignments into this each day that they're using their Google Classrooms because that seems to have been overwhelming for some students. So basically what they would be doing is going into their Google Classroom, figuring out what the assignment is and adding it under each of the blocks. Okay, so they could be adding it here. Um, for math, um, I have filled in the activity here of Dreambox, which is really, um, I just made it up. Uh, there could actually be some Dreambox work kids are doing in math. And as you scroll down, you can see that I've added each assignment and left room for two others if there are other assignments that the students are being assessed on for the week. And at the very bottom, we've got our 30 minutes of reading. And what I like about this is that students can go right in when they finish something and give it a check. So as you see, now it's complete. I'm done with that for the week. I've turned it in. I'm not gonna worry about that anymore. I'm gonna move on to the next thing. I also have over here on the left, a free time menu where kids are brainstorming what they're gonna do for free time, where they're gonna fill those blocks in. It's still important for them to think about their schedule and blocks. So we're now giving them a lot of what they should be doing during their academic blocks. But they still have those free blocks and they still have blocks for getting outside and exercise and, and, and those kinds of things. And so I've given them a little bit of a space to, to brainstorm that. This side now gives them the actual place where they can play with it this week. Okay, they can add in their own free time menu here. Um, all of the subjects are there for them. As they're going through their Google Classrooms, as the curriculum comes out, they can jot their assignments into the sections. And again, when they finish, they can give it a check. So this has been shared with you. It's also been shared with the students. It is in our Google Classroom where I'm, allowed, where I'm able to make them each a copy. So they'll each have a copy of this to be taking a look at. And, um, you know, it's a simple copy and paste, which I show them how to do on the a video teaching that I gave that I will be giving them tomorrow morning for announcements. It's it's simply a drag copy and paste this in so that then you'll have one for the next week and the week after that. And I can certainly help students do that if they need help. They're very, very not shy about emailing me when they need to ask a question. So that's been really great. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was uh, what students are getting as far as the explanation of power school and grading. You've all at this point seen this, and I actually have sent this home to you. Uh, I've updated our remote learning document, and it's in there, but I'm gonna show you, this is what the kids are seeing. So the kids are seeing this um, 
key to letter grades. They're going to see the M meeting learning expectations, the P partially met, and the U. And what they'll understand is that at the end of May and June, each class is going to, each teacher is going to let them know what they've earned. And so how, what does that look like along the way for assignments? Well, in power school, which we've learned is so definitely needed for parents and students to be tracking work, we have the following flags that we can use. So the flags we will be using are collected, incomplete, and missing. And those are already already loaded into the power school. So you're going to be um, pretty familiar with how that comes out to you. It's just like it was when we were in the building. So the collected, if an assignment is marked collected, it met the expectations, your child's done. If, if the assignment has gotten an incomplete, it means it really didn't meet the expectations. It's more partially met, could be incomplete. It could be that the work is, doesn't show the quality that it needs to show. Um, and then your student would need to go and take a look at the feedback from the teacher. They can absolutely resubmit the assignment so that they can earn a collected. Um, they can they have the option to do that. And then obviously missing would be missing. Um, and a student that has a, a, the majority of their work is missing, then that, that's going to send the message to the teacher and to the parent. We can't really give you a, an M or a P. You know, we would need to be giving you a U. We, we're unable to tell what, you're, what you've been able to accomplish during this remote learning time. So these pieces here link right up to the M, the P, and the U that students will learn in May and June. So I've explained that to them in their video for the announcements tomorrow as well. Um, they have a link to this document, and this information is also in the remote learning document that you have in your Sunday greeting email this evening. And then finally, I, I really wanted to make sure that we had we were gauging um, you know, or, or informing our, how we move forward with data. And so these are the questions that I briefly explained in the email. Um, I went out and asked how much time, if kids felt like they were spending more time now that the learning is new. And I'd like to get some more kids answering the survey because as you can see, we've we got about 171 here that are, are that took the survey. So I want to get them all to be taking the survey. But I think it's pretty indicative that most kids felt like they spent more time and then, a, and then a chunk of them all felt like they spent the same amount of time. And then there was a few that felt like, you know, I spent less time. Um, and then, of course, we've got the hours of work. Um, the majority of the students are spending three hours. Uh, the next biggest block is two hours. And then, of course, there's a few that are feeling like they are only spending an hour. Uh, and then and I asked them if they'd made a schedule. I'm, I'm very happy to see that the majority of students did follow some of the templates that were sent out by me and they, they've been able to create a schedule from that. And then there's a whole bunch of kids that they didn't use the template, which is fine. They made their own schedules. That was great. Um, and then there were a few that said they don't have a schedule at all. So I'm really hoping that they, um, you know, are able to come to some sort of routine. So there's the data from the students. I hope you will go in and fill out the survey link that I sent to you in your Sunday greeting email. And I, I plan to continue to send these surveys out uh, probably at the uh, on Fridays, maybe not every Friday, but many of them because I, we just want to make sure that we're uh, planning our, our path forward based on, on data and what's really going on in homes and with kids. Um, I hope this Sunday greeting has been helpful. And I look forward to a wonderful week of our second week of new learning. Um, I, my plan is to send out a vlog uh, this week on Wednesday. And your survey actually asks for you to click off some topics you might be interested in hearing me talk about. Uh, that vlog will be more about content in a certain area as opposed to an update. So I look forward to videoing that for you and getting it out to you on Wednesday. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching.